I came to Vietnam in 62 already. I was responsible for AP's photo coverage. It was a wonderful time because New York was further away than any other place from Saigon. And there was no telephone. There were just slow telexes, and they couldn't tell you anything. Not like today that they try to second guess from far away headquarters and direct you. They just let you, let you go. Getting to the right places was really the most important thing. Here you have people that suddenly the war was right in their village, was next to them. Had never seen a tank close up, had never seen a, a white person. And they didn't know what a camera and a gun is. Looking into a person's face without the person necessarily looking at you and not being distracted by your, by your presence is a, a classic taken by many photographers in, in Vietnam. You don't intrude, you don't move up too close and scare them. That immediate reaction made the best pictures. Here's this picture of totally innocent people being hurt. Huh? His father just didn't know what happened to his child, and the child was one of the uh, early uh, napalm victims of this war, and I photographed him close up with his uh, child and holding it up to me. I sat on this tank, feeling pretty idiotic, and I photographed it, and the tank moved on, and the, the father standing up to his hips in water and this burned child are left behind. Somehow you think what happened to this poor kid, huh? Well, no, what happened? It died. Unfortunately, there was a lot of torture in Vietnam. That was the dirty side of the dirty little war. I always insisted that it should be photographed and, and we should use it. The pictures, in retrospect, uh, uh, changed public opinion. But that was unintentionally so. We hoped that these pictures would be used. We hoped the war would be over soon and not more, more people get, get killed. But trying to influence the war was not our business. It was a horrible story, and the pictures were horrible, but one reflected the other.